Hello and good afternoon. On this bright and beautiful day, I want to be able to take this time to be able to show you some really important strategies and ways that you can teach your students about dynamic sentences. We want to be able to show them that there's a huge difference between dynamic sentences and bare bones sentences. Because as we know, dynamic sentences are... Prima! And bare bone sentences are... <sighs> Let's take a look at how both work together and how we can build on them using five question words. So as we know, there are two different types of sentences out there. There's bare bone sentences and there are dynamic sentences. Now, there's something really, really important about the research behind what students are doing with their learning at this point in primary grades. Now, I teach second grade, so what, if you were to look at a scope and sequence for writing as to what students were expected to learn in this grade, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and so on, if you were to look at in the primary grade, especially second grade, you know, writing a, a sentence with capitalization, punctuation, those are either beginning or developing skills. So it's a very sensitive time with teaching them how to write a proper sentence. Write it correctly and writing it correctly often. And what we have to do is writing often. What I want to be able to show you today is how an easy way to encourage them and show them that it's really not that hard to build a good sentence. Most students will write a sentence that looks something like this. And we're going to start from a very basic, bare bones sentence. Let's start with... Bobby walks. That is a bare bones sentence. It's very simple, it's very basic. Yes, it does have a noun. Yes, it does have a verb. So you have your predicate and your subject. Walks, predicate, your simple subject, Bobby. But there's so much missing from this sentence that's really, really important. We're missing question words like who, what, where, when, and even why. These are all really important question words we want to be able to ask ourselves. And we can't do that if students are not actually cognitively thinking about it. We want them to be thinking about this when they're putting it into a sentence like this. So we have to actually put these words in front of them. When they're writing, we want to make sure that they see these question words. So that we can be quick to ask them, hey, this is a good start. But... We have our who, we have a little bit about what they're doing, but let's talk about where they're going, why are they going, when are they going. There's this really good book that talks about these, these kernel sentences, these simple sentences, and how these question words can help expand this sentence. These are our expanders. We want to grow this sentence and make it dynamic. That's what we're going to do right here. So, I'm going to rewrite this sentence again, and then we're going to start adding some pieces by accessing each of these question words. Okay, so this time, what I did, I noticed that, I'm sure that you noticed a difference, that I changed the color of each of these. Because I want you to be able to see, with these markers right here, is that I'm going to color code each part of the sentence. This is very, very helpful for students. Now, in math, I will tell you that using too many colors isn't helpful when problem solving, things like that. But here, with this language arts lesson, it's really helpful having different colors that are kind of a code for these different question words. Because we want students to see how these are being built and with what pieces. It, think of it of different colored Legos. So, I'm going to start, I'm going to ask myself a series of questions to help build this sentence. First of all, who? So what's my noun? What's my, 
And I say noun because it could be anything. I could be talking about a moon doing something. But in this case, we're talking about a person. We're talking about Bobby. Because remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. So Bobby is the who. So I'm going to start with Bobby. Okay. Bobby. Great. Okay, now, for what, here's what I like to do with what. I like to ask myself this question. I'm going to add a little ditty at the top here. Did what? So now we're talking about the verb or the action or what they're doing. Now, of course, we're not going to reach into being verbs yet. Those is, was, we're not going to jump into those yet. We're just going to focus on action words, simplify the process, and really focus on, these, on expanding the sentence. So we have Bobby did what? Well, he walks. Bobby walks. So let's get my red marker. Bobby walks. Great. So now, Bobby walks. Well, where does Bobby walk? We can ask ourselves this next question. Well, let's say Bobby walks. Bobby walks. My purple marker. There's a lot of different places that Bobby walks. But let's say for today, Bobby walks to the grocery store. Now I could add a period there, but I always encourage my students to write what we call 10 cent sentences. Think of each word as a penny, as a cent. And 10 cents meaning 10 words. Because then they're, with 10 words, they will write a fuller, more dynamic sentence with that. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six cents. I'm getting close. But now I want to ask myself, Bobby walks to the grocery, grocery store. When? When does he walk to the grocery store? Hmm. Bobby walks to the grocery store. On Saturday. Now I could even get more when, even more when, right? More specific. So on Saturday mornings, and you can even ask yourself, well, why? Why does he walk to the grocery store? So let's count our words so far. How many cent words do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I knew I had six, seven, eight, nine. So nine Nine words so far. I'm getting really close to a ten-cent sentence, and I feel like this is really going to take me there. Let's answer the why. Why is Bobby walking to the grocery store on Saturday mornings? And these are these are conferences that I have with students. These are the kinds of questions that I'm going to ask them. So, Bobby walks to the grocery store on Saturday mornings. Why? And I'm gonna. Bobby's a very very kind-hearted, self, uh, selfless person. So he walks to the grocery store on Saturday mornings to pick up his grandma's medicine, period. Because remember, I always tell students, Capitalization, punctuation, oh, that's the way we leave the station. So you have yourself with a fantastic dynamic sentence right here. Let's count the words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen words. That's a fifteen cent sentence. That is a super dynamic sentence. Wow. And it answers all of these question words. Look at the difference from this sentence here to this sentence down here. And all we did was ask ourselves a few questions. Who? Did what? Where or when? And why did they do it? Now here's the really cool part that we want students to also understand as we're helping them and conferencing with them during the writing process. They're not always going to use every single word here, right? Or not, they're not going to use every single question word. We know that. But what we know is true is we want them to develop more detail in their writing. And this is a really great strategy to help them get there.
check out my link down below. You'll be able to see the book that actually develops on this idea. You can check it out there. And also I have a link to my website where I have some examples using these question words. Good luck writing guys and keep on growing.